you, you start like some promo business you 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 need to like get your hype video out ahead of time before we start start the show we yeah. we, we need a we need an mma vivisection hype man somebody to just like come out and get the crowd riled before we do the show somebody that we man so like <laughs> yes psycho black yeah. our very own writers ambitions <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> Oh, I hope it's right at Ambitions. He's probably at a clan rally right now laughing at how he got away with that for so long and how many people still support him. But, hey, that's none of my business. <sighs> so, yes, we are here to talk about Invicta FC 19 and this late night, Vivi. We uh, do it. It's a special one because, you know, Invicta is special, near and dear to all of us. I am joined by Victor Rodriguez and Dio. Talk about this card top to bottom, headlined by a pair of title fights. Roxanne Modafferi in the main event, taking on champ Jennifer Maya, and a co main event between Ayaka Hamasaki and Jin Yu Frey. Although, wait, no, is Jennifer Maya the champ or is this for the vacant belt? No, she was the champ. No, she was okay, the champ. last time around, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I, I keep forgetting who, like, because I know, uh, what's her name? Um, Honchak. Just so, what happened to her? Barb Honchak, no, she needed some time off. I don't remember the reason behind it. I think it was some sort of personal matters or something, but apparently they're going to, um, I think the plans were to have some sort of unification bout upon her return. I think she might have been dealing with some injuries or something like that. I don't, I don't exactly remember, so I don't want to okay. speak. Either way, Maya is the current uh, interim champion and now defending. So that okay. is what it is. Um, isn't uh, wasn't Hanchak champion at one fifteen? No, no. one twenty five. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. Never mind. Yeah, one. Yeah. Gosh, Wick, you're like the stats it's, guy. Fuck it's been me. a long day, dude. I've been, I've been, you know, it's it's what it is. Mm. Dude, I drove exactly eight hours and fifteen minutes today. So yeah. Okay, cool. That's terrible. You two are terrifying. I, I barely left my house today. I left my house to, like, walk my dog, get food, and rent movies. Otherwise, I have been home and working, and that's it. So, mm. I, I, have, I have no excuses. Mm, yeah, no. no. <laughs> so, we're, we're talking about this Invicta card, which it's weirdly both a actually good and interesting Invicta card and an Invicta card that I have very few, like, major i have very little major excitement over you know yeah like there's no highlight fighter th- I, I like roxanne modafferi don't get me mm-hmm. wrong but maya versus Ma- jennifer maya versus roxanne modafferi is not a headlining title fight when i hear that i don't think like oh yeah that's gonna be just action wall to wall nor is a yaka hamasaki versus jin Frey. No, and I like Jin Yu Frey a lot too. Like these are Motiferi and Frey, these are fighters I like to watch. They're fun. It's just like that top main event, it doesn't speak to me. And at the same time, having Irina Irina Aldana on a card, uh, you know, having an SFL champ make her debut on this card, having Tiffany Van Sost on this card. Top to bottom, it's a fun card. It's going to be a fun card. It's just not a card that, like, my first thought looking at it is, eh. Like, if this was the UFC, this would be, like, a fight pass card. Like, Yeah, it'd be a good fight pass card. A good fight pass card, yeah. So, that it, it makes it a little interesting to talk about. Those are my thoughts. Um... I guess we're going to dive right in because we got plenty of fights to talk about here. To the uh, first fight on the card between Suna David's daughter, uh, or I think it's a, da- yeah. a D, David's daughter, uh, versus Ashley Greenway. Yeah. And Vic, you are covering your mouth as though trying not to speak, so why don't you start this out? No, 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 no. That's all right. Okay, first off, you got Suna Davis' daughter, who is making her professional debut after having a uh, 4-0 amateur record in MMA and a, having a, a Muay Thai record as well. Two TKOs and one submission to go. Unfortunately, she doesn't have any notable opposition to speak of, um, so there's not really that much to that that's out there for us to see. Uh, her Muay Thai has looked 
okay. I mean, she does rely on a lot on her physical uh, talents and, you know, it's not super technical, but she seems to hit pretty hard and she can be pretty precise in some of her exchanges. Whereas you've got Ashley Greenway, who's one and oh, is a professional seven and four is an amateur, uh, she fought on an Invicta card in her professional debut against Sarah Click. Uh, she's got losses on the amateur circuit to J.J. Aldrich and Tisha Torres, and uh, she's got an amateur win over a regional, I guess, veteran at this stage, Andy Nguyen. Um, this is sort of a weird one because I'm not really sure that uh, Suna's going to have the cardio really to keep up. And Greenway's got kind of a – you know, I'll take seven punches to land that one, and she can hit pretty hard. I'm not sure if Davis Dawn is going to be able to deal with that kind of pressure, and there's not really much to show how she's going to be able to deal defensively with wrestling either. So um, I'd actually favor Greenway on this one. What, what are your thoughts on this, Dia? Uh, it's for the most – like, at first I was thinking earlier, this oh, that's a coin flip because it's both – they're both still relatively yeah. new. But then once I actually went back and looked – that's a lot of, even though they're all Amy fights, that's a lot of fights that, to have <laughs> so far. And as many fights as David's daughter's had, it's, like you said, it's not against notable competition. And I have a feeling she's going to get in there and she's going to hit Greenway and Greenway's not going to go away. And then she's going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is a problem. And because, like, that's, that's what, with... A lot of foreign, you know, uh, outside of, like, if fights that take place outside of the United States, it's really hard to really gauge how good comp is. And I have a feeling this is going to be one of them situations. <laughs> well, we, we also see a lot of uh, Muay Thai and kickboxing women come over yeah. to MMA and even some good ones. Like, we've had some big successes, obviously, but there have even been some really good ones who've just failed miserably. Like Joanna uh, Bars. Yeah, Joanna Bars. People were like, oh, what if she took up MMA? It's like, she did. She sucked she at did. it. <laughs> she got elbow. Like, didn't she get, like, forearm chokes? Which is Something like, like that, yeah. I've, ne- I've never grabbed one a day in my life, and I know how to get out of a forearm choke. So, yeah, it's yeah. It, it's a totally different thing. So it'll be interesting to see David Stoddard in there against Greenway, somebody who is definitely seems like has built her career up just through MMA. And is tough as shit, too. That's the other thing. That brings us to our second bout of the night, a 145 featherweight bout. First one's at 115. Oh, and by the way, I should preface this before I keep moving ahead. I don't have odds for this, unfortunately, because we're doing this early on a Wednesday instead of closer to the event. Um, we don't have any odds for this fight, so I can't give you odds. I wish I could, but they aren't out there. Uh, this, so, yeah, second fight, 145 featherweight bout. Amy Coleman, Amber LeBrock. What's your thoughts on this, Dio? Um, let's see. So, uh, let me think of something witty to say. Uh. God damn it. You're supposed to have, <laughs> supposed to have notes and prep, and I, I'm expecting, like, cue cards and lines. Notes and prep? I'm not Vic. Like, Vic's the only one that actually comes with facts, and facts don't matter. So yeah, This is true. This is true. Facts are fucking irrelevant. Vic also has um, nothing witty to say, though. So you, you gotta, you're, you're here. If if Vic is play by play, you're supposed to be color commentary. That's your job. Yeah, all I got is oral right. sex jokes. I mean, I, 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 there's not much and else. Here we go. About. Okay, Amber LeBrock. <laughs> well, we've seen her fight twice so far on Invicta cards, and like I know Vic will probably try to polish it and be like, "Oh, she's this, 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 that, and the other," and this. Eh. She is the toughest woman at the bar. Mm, what it boils down to in most of the fights that I've seen so far. And it's very much that I'm tall and I'm just going to stick hands out (laughs) and not really look where I'm going. And even though Coleman lost her first two Amy fights, she looked decent in her pro fights. um, And she's built like a brick shithouse. So I'm going to go with Coleman. Hey, and one of her one of her amateur losses was to Sage Northcutt's sister, yeah. Right. Northcutt. Yes. Who is like a somehow a prettier version than him? I, I don't exactly understand how that works. The jury's still out on that, by the way. Eh, whatever. That whole family is gorgeous. 
<laughs> I hate All right, but let's not get too far into how many of Sage Northcutt's family members Dio would have sex with. But Vic, what's your take on this? All but the dad. But <laughs> well, you know, the, the Northcuts are like muscular Zane Simons. I don't know. That's that's they they look rather delectable. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't take that. I can't, I can't stand <laughs> up to that. I also don't want all the personal baggage that goes with that either. <laughs> You just might. You never know. You've, you're still a young man. Or you're still young. Or the staph infection that comes mm, along. No, yeah. you don't, no, I've been through there. You don't want that. I'll give you that. Not that uh, young either, so I don't know. This is all a little weird. Yeah, yeah okay. well, welcome to the vivisection. Yeah, yeah, that's how we do. <laughs> the late night vivisection. Yes. Indeed. Yes, indeed. This used Q to be a family show. show. Not no more. Mm-mm. This was never a family show. Now, Vic... Okay. Is Amber LeBrock actually the toughest woman in a bar? You've been to many bars. In a matter of speaking, yeah, kind of. Um, here, here's the situation <laughs> with that. LeBrock doesn't seem as athletic as she perhaps may be. It's, it's one of those very deceptive things. And you look at her body type and her movement and how she kind of um, – how she moves around. It looks a little herky-jerky and sort of stumbling that forward. Looks, it is. <laughs> well – Yes, it is. This is this is very true. But here's a situation with her. She hits really, really hard. And it's worked in her favor that she's able to outmuscle some of the opponents that she's faced. She's able to just hurt them. And it's not like she doesn't have technique once she's got them hurt. You know, she is able to pour on the pressure. She is able to apply on like that. Um, there's that, I think it was from a tough enough fight where she was able to slap on a, a, a rear naked choke that started off not even under the chin. You know, so it, it's one of those things where just by pure grit, determination, and physicality, she is able to get ahead based on the caliber of opponents that she's faced. Uh, she's 3-1 and one as an amateur with uh, one knockout, a straight legit knockout and a submission. 1-1 one and one as a pro, um, which was the TKO against Marina Shafir. We, sadly, we saw that time. We haven't, probably Ooh. haven't seen or heard from Marina since. I don't know if that was her last fight. We'll uh, see Marina in, in pro wrestling before we see her in a Okay. Which probably would be the best bet, and I'd actually favor that, really. If we're All going four horsewomen need to be in pro wrestling and not in the cage anymore. And uh, you got Amy Coleman on the other side, who's 5-2 and two as an amateur with three TKOs and one submission. And 2-0 uh, and oh is a professional, one TKO win. She does have a loss to Ava Johnson, who we saw in Invicta as well, and uh, Colby Northcutt, who we just mentioned, who's actually a very, very sharp kickboxer, who isn't really any fault of her own. Coleman just seems to have, again, another one of these people who comes into MMA with something of an established amateur record, start off professionally, still being very raw, very unpolished, but she does have at least her wrestling fundamentals. She is able to box competently, even if it's only basic. I don't know if her, if that's really going to help in this case, against someone who hits as hard and can go down the middle like uh, Amber does. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to favor Amber on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All okay. I hear is just kitchen stuff in the go. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like Welcome to the married life. So. Is... <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Wait, who were you picking? I, I was totally distracted by the the rummage it been. I'm picking. I'm picking. I'm picking LeBrock. Yeah, that's one. Okay. So one for LeBrock, one for Coleman's split on that one. That brings us to a Adam Weight fight uh, against uh, between Julia Jones, undefeated four and zero, and Stephanie Skinner at four and five. Vic, what do you what's your take on this bout? Yeah, I'm not too optimistic about this. All these other fights seem to be, as most Invicta cards are, they seem to be geared primarily towards, um, you know, setting up people at the bottom who aren't established and then uh, working away up and at least having action fights that are, you know, fights that have the potential to at least be very watchable and very fun. And they've largely delivered on that front in most of these events. This might not go the way they expect it to. Uh, Julia Jones, very scrappy grappler, very, you know, active off her back, very basic with her striking. Two and two is an amateur. Four and zero oh is a pro. Um, just very, very strong in the clinch and amazing cardio. That's really the only true strong bright spot that she's got. Whereas Skinner is uh, one and two is an amateur. Four and five is a pro. Uh, not really much that's that's notable. I mean, she's got losses to uh, Darla Harris and Angela Hill, and uh, went over Kira Batara, who's um, 
over in Combat de Americas these days, and I think Japan now, she's going to be on that rising card. But other than that, I mean, Skinner's been around for a bit. You know, she's very basic in everything that she does. She's very strong. And she's a competent fighter, but she's just not able to put it all together. It seems like they're setting Julia Jones up for a win here or an opportunity for Stephanie Skinner to even out her record. But, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to go are that way. the only two options other than a draw that you, you lose. Yeah, but that's also <laughs> possible. And it's not going to be a pretty one either. It's just probably going to be a lot of, you know, Skinner on top and uh, Jones trying to throw up Hail Mary submissions for a long time. So, um I'm probably going to go with Jones here, but, I mean, it's not exactly impossible for Skinner to win those. All right, Dia, what are, what's your thought on this fight? This is a cannon fodder fight. They're trying to create another contender or just another name uh, for Adam Weight. So, hence bringing in a foreign uh, fighter against Jones, which, like Vic said, she's good, decent most places, but it's – like, if you look at video and pretty sure after we see this fight, like, there's nothing, absolutely nothing that she has for anybody in the top three of Adam White. But shit happens. You got to get people in the door, and, you know, you got to match them up with somebody. Yes. That's... Still not the bit the worst squash match of the night, though. <clears throat> so, all right. You're picking Jones, too, then, I take it? Yeah. All right. I mean, it, it, for somebody like Jones, who is primarily a grappler, the fact that she has no submissions, does, or she only has one submission, does not fill me with, you know, yeah. uh, a whole lot of... Like, it's kind of like voting for Hillary Clinton. It's like, I guess... <laughs> You're holding your nose and saying, like, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I guess, like, I don't have any fucking choice, so whatever. Shit. All right. Julia Jones, the Hillary Clinton of Invicta 19. <laughs> That brings us to a very notable debut at uh, Strawweight. Tiffany Time Bomb Van Soest, the kickboxer, versus Kayla Schwartz. Both women making their Invicta debuts and their pro their MMA debuts. What's your uh, What's your uh, thoughts on this, Dio? Um. <laughs> Couldn't find, really couldn't find much on Kayla Schwartz when I looked earlier. So this one's kind of a up in the air type of thing. Vic, say some shit. <laughs> I'm going to pick Van Sost just because okay. she's really good at kickboxing. Really good. So, yeah. Vic, say something. All right, help a brother out. Okay. Van Sost is 1-0 and as an amateur and 0-1 as a pro. She actually took a fight in China a while ago, lost by submission. Um, this was back in 2011. I'm not sure how well she's actually sharpened up her game, and I'm not really sure what her motivations are right now because she did have that spat with Lion Fight where they weren't, you know, she was their champion and the most visible uh, female fighter there, but they weren't paying her. So, you know, it, things got uh, a little rough there. Um, maybe that influenced her decision to come over to Invicta. They might have made an attractive offer along with allowing her to continue to kickbox elsewhere. Uh, Kaylin Schwartz, though, is not going to be a pushover. When it comes to MMA striking, she's a lot more grounded. Um, certainly not as precise. Doesn't bring those same accolades. 4-0 and is an amateur, although all her wins are decisions. She is very, very able to... Uh, just grab Vansos and start to bully her, you know, maybe push her around and eventually work the takedowns and start, you know, working her way to a decision from there. So uh, as much as, like, I, I the, the, the smart thing would be very obviously at first glance to pick Vansos, but you know what? I'm actually going to go with Schwartz on this one. Just I'm going to take a flyer on it because why the hell not? And the yeah. other thing, too, to, to think uh, about Vansos is she – was very has been very vocal about how stop asking me about MMA. Anytime anybody asks her about when she's going to have an MMA debut, I don't. I'm only worrying about Muay Thai right now. So like it was, I'm kind of on the fence as far as like what her motivation. Just like how Vic said, I don't know what her motivation actually is because she was adamant for years where I am only going to be fighting Muay Thai. So it's like, what ha what changed, you know? 
Yeah. The, um, the, the whole, the, the, I mean, you know, it's prize fighting. Anybody who says don't, you know, don't do it for the money. Don't, you know, we don't want to Matt Hughes anyone out here. Oh, but uh, uh -oh. it's also, it is worrying to think of somebody just doing the sport to get a better paycheck because there's not a lot of money here. And it's fucking like MMA is hard. This shit. Yeah is diff much different than kickboxing or, you know, jujitsu or boxing. And if you're just jumping over to like, ah, I think I can make some good paychecks. That's worrying. Mm. Yeah. And I actually, I just watched some video on Kaylin Schwartz here. She's got a fight up on YouTube. I'd pick her. Like she looks aggressive as hell. And usually if somebody's actually been training MMA and they're really aggressive, aggressive takedown game, aggressive dirty boxing game, gonna go after somebody, they're probably gonna win. Like this should be fun either way. Yeah, it should make for a good fight because yeah. obvious like it you know, if Tiffany Van Sos comes out and looks awesome and looks technical and does great, then yeah. awesome. You got an instant star, you got an instant success that you can build around. And if she just goes out there and, like, gets, you know, publicly totally shamed, mm. that'll be something to watch. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, yeah. So uh, that brings us now, speaking of public shaming, to Manjit Kolkar, Kolkar versus Kayleen Medeiros. Oh. <laughs> hey. oh. What are your thoughts on this fight? It's a straw way yeah. about. Strap in. It's going to be fun. Talk us through it. <sighs> I don't know why the hell this is happening. Okay, look. Um, Magic Cola Cart, 9-0 as a professional. I didn't even bother to look up if there's any sort of amateur thing. I'm guessing, given the state of India and MMA, there probably isn't much uh, in terms of amateur can bouts imagine, or anything. What, can you imagine the sense of taking fights in Super Fight League and having them not pay you? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> That I can imagine that, as a matter I of mean, fact. I mean, but, like, knowingly, like, having them say, we're not going to pay you. <laughs> knowingly, that's another matter yeah. entirely. But, um, yeah, look, she's got uh, a couple of submissions on her, three submissions, four TKOs. Uh, her most notable win was against Rakita Singh, who was her fellow contestant when Super Fight League did that similar. Uh, they did their own version of The Ultimate Fighter, which was not very good, admittedly. Um, look, Terrible. Super Fight League is known for good reason, for being essentially the academy of headlocks, okay? Guys go in for a takedown, you just wrap your arm around their neck, and it's not necessarily a guillotine choke, but you squeeze hard enough, you're going to get a win. You got back control, you put them in a headlock. You get the guys behind you, put them in a headlock. That's really a lot of what we've seen, and Manji Kolakar is one of these people who's, she's gotten ahead by virtue of being slightly better in her grappling than pretty much everybody else that she's faced. And unfortunately, that's not saying much because the level of grappling in Indian MMA has not been as good as it is in other places. And again, much like I've joked around that we always end up talking about Ultimate Fighter China and India and why that shit never happened. Well, this is why. It's because there is a lack of infrastructure and it's very sorely hurt by a lot of the things that a lot of the necessities that just they just don't have the basics to, to really be successful and well-rounded. Uh, whereas you put her in there against someone like Colleen Medeiros, who is absolutely fearless, very adamant about getting her takedown and just pounding her opponents out from there. One and two is an amateur, seven and four is a pro, two TKOs, one submission. She does have losses to Peggy Morgan, which is a bit concerning, but she was a bit undersized in that bout. So I kind of, Five foot three. Peggy Morgan is like six like one. Fucking yes. exactly. Like, like I'll, I'll give her that by virtue of even though Peggy Morgan is not very good at using her range, but ten inches is also of height. Ten she inches. Is, yeah, and she's strong as hell. So like I, I gotta give her a pass on it's that. Ten, if she's even if Peggy Morgan is not strong, that's ten inches. Like, well, I mean, if, if that's the only thing, Stefan Struve would have been champion years ago. I mean, there's there's more to it. But he, okay, but women's 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 MMA, MMA and heavyweight MMA, two different things. Like, Which is also true. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a there, there's no other weight classes in a, in men's MMA where somebody has a ten inch height advantage. Like that just never happens in any other place than heavyweight. That's, that's actually true. Yeah. Enjoy. Well. Yeah, or, maybe, or wherever Will Chope fights, like PX, PXC or whatever. 
But uh, Medeiros has kind of she has been around the block. She's got wins over regional veterans Aline Sirio, Kathina Catron, Sarah Payant, and Bridget Narcisse, including a win over former title challenger Stephanie Egink. Uh The only other notable losses she has was against Chell Dash C Bailey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're back at that again. Oklahoma oh representing hard. <laughs> that you were, you devious, devious man. And so, yeah, um, there's not really you – know, I, I, I kind of – I want to see Kolokar do well, but I don't think she's got the tools necessary no matter what, unless she moves to the U.S., does a camp here, at least, at least one camp, you know, at least a good two, three months and, and can get some, some traction going there. So that today is not going to be the day. All right, Dia, what's your thoughts on this? You, you, you hyping Kolokar? Are you ready for her to, to come in and blow out all the competition here? What? Boom, no. pow, punch, kick, wow. Come no. on. <laughs> no, ma'am, Boom. not super. Fight. League, no, we're not doing that. No, it was terrible. It was terrible. She's super terrible. Super Fight League was the best thing ever. Oh, well, no, you know what? Wait a minute. Let me not say that because if it weren't for Super Fight League, we wouldn't have Joanne Calderwood. So – that's one thing that did come from it. Uh, Rest, no, I disagree with that for sure. Your face, your face, <laughs> shut up. Uh, oh. So, as you don't really have to look at her, at her record whatsoever. I did earlier today. And when you look, it, everybody on it is win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss. And in somewhere like India, where fight, where combat sports of this nature are still like this is way early like this is even lower than like UFC one levels of skill that you're seeing in most of these fights and it's like okay she got like Vic said she got good at being a little bit better than grappling and just having to be like tougher than everybody else that she fought because it's just <sighs> like I understand like, I remember when they first signed her, they kind of hyped it. And other companies and other combat sports have done the same thing in going into India, trying to find raw talent. They did it in pro wrestling, and it failed hard. But I, everything that we've seen from Manjit is just – it does not say, oh, yeah, this is a legitimate fighter. So Kalina Madaris is probably going to walk through her. Topology is telling me they're different people, but I see, actually significantly doubt it. But three of her nine wins appear to be over the same woman. So. Sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Monica Malik, Monica Malik, Monica oh, Malik. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. This is going to be amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So, it's, you know what? I got to say, though, I'm, I actually think this is a really good idea for Invicta to do this. Like, you know, you got to pull in a little bit of that, a, a little bit of something weird to make these cards spark a little. Like, I'm interested yeah. in this fight. I want to see That's not my kind of weird, man. I mean, how many eyeballs from India are you really attracting? What's the fight? No, it, but, like, you just like, got to give people something to talk about on the card. Maybe, you know? Yeah. Like, like, like this is like a, like, boys in the hood. Like, y'all want to see a dead body? Like... <laughs> We can, like, this is what it's going to look like at the end of it. And Kalina Medeiros is by no means a world beater, but she's... She's a solid. She's, I mean, she's a she, solid she's fighter. She's been fighting on Legacy and Bellator and Invicta, like... she's CES, been a, too, yeah. So, she, she it's definitely against a, a good, solid veteran of the sport, which, yeah, is a bit questionable. Yeah. All right. I'm saying I'm excited for it. I want to see a dead body. But if the rest of you don't, fine. No. You know. Oh, no. <laughs> you two pretend you got standards, but I know better. Mm -hmm. That brings us. <laughs> don't get me started. That, that uh, don't us, do it. <laughs> that brings us to a bantamweight fight between Irene Aldana and Faith Van Dween. What, did you, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Dio, right? Is that you? Yeah, I think it's you. Talk about it. Uh, we already know how I feel about Irene Aldana. So, yeah, so try to keep it clean, a little clean. How? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so 
I just I, I was talking to Vic about this a few weeks back, and I was like, I just don't see where Van Duin has anything, anything <laughs> for Aldana. Um, yeah, Aldana is wildly athletic, striking's great, you know, and she's very quick to lock in a submission if she does get you to the ground. So you know, yeah, I'm Aldana. I, I will say, for in Van Duin's defense, she does seem to have a little bit of that Cindy Dandois thing going on, where you're watching it and you're like, "Okay, this shouldn't work," and then she just somehow wins, and you're like, "What?" Yeah. what? But who she wins, ag- but it's who she wins against. Is... Well, I, I, well, yeah, but you know, she's still yeah. whatever. She's still her in her career. I'm just saying, there's a little bit of that. Like I remember in that Amanda Bell fight, it was like, "Okay, you're, she's gonna get blown out," and then it's like, "Wait, yeah, you want that?" But again, yeah. it's who I'm just it's who she lost. I heard she won and lost. Good, it. You start talking before Dio try keeps trying to like you know, <laughs> show me what's what. I make the new the argument every time. It's <laughs> fucking like, like now you step in on that. I I'm done. I'm done hearing you ramble and drink over there. <laughs> Donna Shalala. I'm gonna Donna Shalala this whole fucking thing. <laughs> okay, Vic talk. I mean, I'm actually having fun watching you get watching you get dragged in the deep water. I'm like, no, I want to see this motherfucker survive. Hang on, this might get good, but no, apparently it didn't. All right, so no, no, okay. no, he's got his <laughs> island thing going on where he's just drinking and sitting back and saying the same thing. And I bet you he got them big brown slippers too that are hard as fuck. Them rubber ones. I mean, if we really want to start drinking too. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. 140 proof? We can do this. <laughs> no, no, not good. All right, so uh, I'm going to start off with Faye Van Duen, who is <sighs> – she is uh, mostly known for her kickboxing. You know, she's got a pretty good sense of range. You know, she's got um, – she's deceptively strong, especially, you know, for, for, for her frame. Uh, problem is that she's got – she's going to be at a very notable speed disadvantage here. Not only that, she's not as precise – Whereas Aldana's boxing is clean. It's slick. She's in. She's out. The only person who ever really gave her any trouble was Tanya Evinger. And there's no shame in that at all because Evinger is another one of those people who is, um, you know, she's, she's sort of her own thing. You know I mean? I don't think, I don't think that uh, due to the experience level, she was going to be ready for that. But um, Aldana is just, she's the far better athlete. She's far more, she's more well-rounded. Even though Van Duin does have some slick submissions and she can be very, uh, she can pull them out of nowhere, as we saw in the Amanda Bell fight. You know, she's the only other notable opposition is Arlene Blanco, who she's won one and one against. But by virtue of the fact that Aldana has beaten better opposition and she's done so, so impressively, and the fact that she's got just stylistically the matchup does not look that great. And usually when you're talking about someone who's a kickboxer versus a boxer, I mean, I got to look certainly as to who's, who's on what side, but – uh, you know, in this case, yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely go with Aldana all the way. I mean, she just seems to have the poise and the ability to really shut things down. So, yeah, Aldana all day. All right. That brings us to a, uh Adam Waite title fight, co-main event, exciting fight, Ayaka Hamasaki versus Jin Frey. Like, I, I say exciting, but really I'm just – I like Jin Frey, so I, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Vic? Talk to me about this fight. You should be excited. Let me tell you something. Hamasaki got a, a bit of flack for not being as exciting and maybe what was her first uh, Invicta fight, but that fight against Amber Brown was really, really good. So, I mean, again, sometimes the styles make the fights and it, it takes a certain kind of fighter to bring that out of you, but that was a hell of a, like, just scramble fest and just tons of submissions and... I think she really demonstrated more technique. I do think quality. this matchup will be good because the way Frey fights should play into a pretty exciting stuff. It, it could. And you know what? She's got a, a, a slick stand-up game too. Um, I'm not so sure that she's going to – She Hamasaki's not going to be able to bully her. It's not one of those things where she'll easily take her down and start to work from there and eventually submit her or anything like that. But it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun to watch it happen. I want to see her try and uh, you better believe there's going to be something along those lines, you know, leg kicks and everything uh, on both ends. So um, based on, again, just having that grappling advantage and that, uh, 
that that uh, that that better sense of, of staying technical in moments of, of just that that frenzy. I'm going to go with Hamasaki on this one, defending the title. Uh, as much as I love watching Frey fight, I think she's really been one of the more pleasant surprises with this new Invicta. Um, I just I just don't see it. She might be able to pull it off, but I just don't see it. All right, Dio. I'm also going with Hamasaki, um, mainly because I still <sighs> Jinyu Frey is one of those. It's the the classic adage of like you never come into something on top. Like you need to build up from the bottom because we all, when we first were introduced to Jin Frey, it was a spectacular knockout that swept the MMA internet. And since then, it's been you know she can't pull the trigger. She's way too tentative in certain fights and getting someone like Hamasaki, that's that's a bad combination. You know, if you don't, you know, get off immediately in the fight, then you're fucked. You will get grappled to death. And if Frey is tentative, which she has been in plenty of fights thus far, like it could be a very long night for her. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I want to root for Frey, but in this one, I just, I got to, I got to be smart and whatnot. And all that good all stuff. All right. I, I personally am at least hoping that maybe, you know, maybe f like it's, it's always hard to forget how, or easy to forget how uh, early a lot of these fighters are in their career. So yeah. maybe, you know, maybe that's something that we see over time. Although volume, adding volume to a striking game tends to be one of the hardest things for fighters to actually learn as they go. Fighters yeah. tend to actually decline in volume as they get better because they get more selective and are more dominant. They don't tend to pick up their volume. So, still, with only a couple of years under a belt, I'm hoping Frey can make some big adjustments and come out looking looking like a killer here. That brings us to our main event, a 125 inter flyweight interim title fight. Between Gen champion Jennifer Maya and Roxanne Modafferi, what are your thoughts on this, Dio? Um, so this one was actually uh, actually a very tough um, one to pick. Um, Jennifer Maya is solid just about everywhere. Um, I she can go toe to toe with the best of them and will drag anybody into deep water. Uh, Roxanne Modafferi is like the epitome of the MMA journey woman, but her career resurgence has been like one of the most amazing things to see in MMA in the past decade, really. Um, she went from being, you know, Roxanne Modafferi that got KO'd via slam and, you know, attempting a arm bar and not letting go when she should have, uh, to being K1 Modafferi. So it's a, it, it's a tough one to go for here. I'm going to, I'm leaning towards Maya on this one. I'm um, just for being more well-rounded. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be actually probably one of them, probably the most technical uh, about on the card as far as striking and everything else goes. But just the fact that Maya has no problem putting you up against the fence. She has no problem grappling any aspect, any phase of this fight. Maya is going to be really good at. Modafferi, of course, is still really, you know, she is an excellent grappler, and her striking has come just light years, hundreds of light years from what it used to be. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a dope scrap. Like this, I am actually, even though this isn't like, you know, the ultra mega, you know, main event that you would want, it's still a really good fight to make that I'm excited to see. Yeah, I think that's kind of the, my feeling for the whole card up and down is that, like, it, there's no one fight on this where I'm like, oh, that fight is just going to be so good. But the whole card should at least be fun. Vic, yeah. what are your thoughts on this title fight? Yeah, man, Modafferi is, and I'll say it again, man, she's the most, the, the, the best feel-good comeback story in the sport since Mark Hunt. I mean, it's, it's just been so great to see her turn things around from losing six straight fights to just bouncing back and not only winning these fights, but looking really good. And that's not even counting the loss that she had while she was on the Ultimate Fighter. So, right. um, you know, yeah, she's had some, you know, the, the Tara La Rosa fight, nobody really looked that great, but she looked fantastic against Andrea Lee. 
Uh, she fought Mar Mariana Moraes and Invicta at Invicta 14 in a fight that really she could not have lost. That was probably a fight that should not have happened. Maybe the second worst mismatch uh, in the, the, the organization's history. Um, and that went over Deanna Bennett, man. She looked she looked pretty good in a lot of those spots there. So she even looked know, good against Porto too. So that's. She did even in a losing effort against Porto. You're absolutely right. Uh, she 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 still looked good in, in some of those exchanges, most of those exchanges, really. But um, you know, Maya seems to just have a much more natural MMA game. She certainly seems to be the more well-rounded athlete of the two, a more dynamic athlete of the two. Um, I'm not really concerned with either one having any sort of problem with cardio or anything along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. But I kind of think that Mata Ferry, the way she's as smart as she's been fighting and being able to disrupt the rhythm of her opponent, being able to sort of stop the mid combination and maybe get one or two shots that aren't that, uh, aren't that significant, but at least get them thinking and then start bringing her pace along. I think that's really going to make things very, um, I don't know what Maya's expecting, but it might be very different from what she might have originally thought. So I, I really think that Maya Ferry has – again, we don't even have the odds on this. On paper, I would venture a guess that Maya would have to be the favorite, but I'm going to go with Maya Ferry on this one. I think she takes it probably by decision. Um, I don't see Maya submitting oh, her. This one's going to the, yeah, this one's going to decision. I don't yeah. see this. I don't see Maya so. submitting her, and I don't see her finishing her with strikes either because – Roxanne can take a lot of punishment and might be able to turn up the heat late. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to go with Roxanne on this one. And, again, it doesn't look that great on paper as we've already – all three of us have pretty much come on agreement. This whole card might not look like much on paper, but when you really take a closer look, this looks like it's going to deliver. So I'm really happy for this fight, and I really hope it happens the way we're expecting it to. Yeah, I, I think my, my biggest worry about Mataferi getting a win is that Maya is probably the most bullying fighter that – Mata Ferry will have faced in her recent run, even mm -hmm. more so than Vanessa Porto, who tends to be a bit more of a pick your spots striker. Who you know, Porto will press the clinch and press the physical advantage some, but she likes to be a very like fast in and out striker. Yeah. And a physical bully is probably just the right fighter to really take advantage of what is still going to be Mata Ferry's biggest problem, which is just not being a good athlete. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing you cannot teach athleticism. And that's no. why I'm leaning towards, <clears throat> that's why I'm leaning towards Maya is because as many times as Roxy disrupts her rhythm, all it, all Maya will have to do is just put her up against the fence and just grate her against the fence until the end of that round. Yeah. And I don't see Roxy, of course, like, we haven't really seen anybody that is as physically strong as Maya. Not recently. Outside of, like, outside of like uh, Raquel Pennington that was as, you know, that could bully uh, Roxy around. But I just don't see how – I don't see her doing that to uh, Maya. I just, you know. Yeah, I mean, It's going to be fun, but I would not be surprised if Roxy gets anything going. Yeah. Maya has – she – Maya's done it against – she's done it multiple times now. If you start getting too much, she'll put you against the fence and dirty box and just keep it there. Rack up those points. So – Should make – yeah. Oh, overall, I don't know. I, I, I assume the odds are going to favor Maya. But I'm happy to see Ma Mata Ferry back in action. Happy to see her at the top of a card, even if it doesn't make for the most, uh, you know – eye-popping card on paper. I think if you're an Invicta fan, then that's th this is very much a card targeted at Invicta fans, people who are going to want to show up for Irene Aldana and Jin Frey and yeah. Mata Ferry. And, uh, you know, then you get some treats, like seeing Tiffany Van Soest and Manjit Kolakar. So, <laughs> if you want to call that a treat. I, I do call that a treat. I, I, I am, you know... Bob Sapp versus Akebono for life. You're a goddamn Ooh. sadist. That's the fuck you are. That's just terrible. <laughs> All right. I'm calling it now. If, uh. if, if Irene Aldana wins this fight, especially in spectacular fashion, she's going to be going over to the UFC just like uh, Lexi Grasso did. Calling it now. I know, the, I know Invicta doesn't want to separate themselves from these people, but yeah, yeah. at some point, they, they got to move upward. That's the only, the only way that women's MMA can kind of keep 
growing and improving is if they have a bigger stage to jump to and be successful at. Uh huh. So I mean, there's nothing. Else, like, I know a lot of people hate the term, but uh, they are a feeder league. So yeah. you know, like until the UFC well, gets so big that it actually has to go in and devour like the atom weights and things of that nature. Like they are a they are a straw weight. That's that's probably a good problem to have too. I mean, I don't, there's there's yeah. nothing really wrong with that as long as everybody's getting paid and every the company's breaking even at least or at least you know marginally getting a profit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's really just – it seems very important that Invicta stay alive and stay healthy to give people yeah. – give women a consistent place to fight and show and develop. Like not, yes. you know, a – not some regional promotion that's going to put on one big women's MMA fight every six months. And it's like that – you can't develop talent that way. So, yeah. All yeah, right. It's Did a, you have any closing notes, Vic? Yeah, just uh, very, very quick. We do have a pretty packed weekend, especially on the regional scene. Uh, Ring of Combat has an event, CES up in the Northeast, Road FC in Korea, and Ryzen is taking place, what is it, Saturday or Sunday, I believe, sometime around 2 in the morning. Uh, oh, that man. is looking – it's looking crazy. Gabby they have Garcia a free on that international card. free, though. It's their Grand Prix 2016. Yes. I kind of – I, I kind of regret not doing a show just on that. I might later this week. I'll see. But uh, I want in. I, you know, it, it's hard to, like, Ryzen, they're putting, they're giving me the, they're giving out that hard to ignore pride feels that you're just like, I'm willing to stay up till two in the morning and watch, to watch this trash. Right. And it's like, it's, but it's not like competitive pride feel. It's, no. it's the, it's all the worst parts of pride. Like Which you know all the worst parts of pride and dream. I and love it. Like, but even though, even though it's not terribly competitive, the potential for upsets is so alive that it's like, I, mean, I don't know, man, that doesn't seem that bad. And this card alone, you got Gabby Garcia on it. Kira Batara is going to be on it. The artist formerly known as crazy horse, Charles Bennett. Don't call him that. He does not like it. He's got some other new nickname now. Uh, Tildoris uh, Alex who we saw in the 205 tournament. Uh, you got uh, Yuri Prohazka, who was also in that tournament. You got Asa yeah. Yamamoto. Darren Krukshank is taking on Andy Sauer for some reason. I don't know why. Because that would be uh, badass. I, man, I want to see Darren Krukshank fight. I want to see it too. You got Krokop fighting some Korean guy who apparently peels coconuts with his teeth or whatever the hell he does. Rina Kubota is back in action. And the main event, <laughs> Daryl Takoro fighting Krone Gracie and a partridge in a pear tree. That shit looks great. I don't know about you, but that I'm excited for it. All right. I'm not going to be watching it because I'm not trying to fucking wake up at that goddamn early, but yeah. But in the meantime, you can stay up You can stay up waiting for it, listening to the Bodega Superstar podcast. I hear they got some handsome oh, gentlemen. Oh, he go. went for the plug. <laughs> All right. On that note, you can find me on Twitter at these anytime. You can find Vic on Twitter at Vic Cameron Rodriguez. You can find Dio on Twitter at I'm Just Dio. Yeah, you find- talk about people and pro wrestling and yeah. say Bennett stuff. And uh, you can find Vic and I over at Bloody Elbow. You will not find Dio there. He is banned. <laughs> you just might. <laughs> no, you just might. Posting booty shots. All right. On that note, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Really Give us a like. That's a thumbs up. Subscribe to MMANation.com. That's our YouTube channel. Both those things help us a ton, and we will see you next time.